who's who on the battlefield. Hi there, uh, YouTube. Welcome back to Ventures with Yours. If World War II history interests you, I'm Chloe Jean, and I'm a reenactor and vintage enthusiast who's dedicating a channel solely to exploring the American home front during World War II. And as a reenactor, I have to gain a better uh, picture of the world of the 1940s. And part of that is actually knowing who is who on the battlefield. So today's video, I'm going to take hopefully a brief look on perhaps the biggest military commanders of the war, MacArthur and Patton. All that being said, let's get into the video. Douglas MacArthur was born on January 26, 1880, and comes from a very long line of military men and Arthurs. His father was Arthur MacArthur III, who was a Civil War veteran and was the Governor General of the Philippines. So it only seemed natural for Arthur's son, Douglas, to actually join the military. And he went into West Point and graduated in 1903, and then spent the next 10 years at West Point as a junior engineer officer, as well as an aide to his father. Then he spent the next four years still at West Point on the general staff of the academy and then was sent to Veracruz, Mexico to take part in the occupation in 1914. His military career is projected rather far during World War I because he served as, as a brigade commander, then division commander, then the chief of staff of the 42nd Division in France from 1917 to 1919. During that time, he is made Brigadier General, so he actually kind of loosed track of him until the 1920s. He goes back to West Point to be the superintendent of that academy and brings in some much needed reforms. He married a young woman by the name of Louise Cromwell. Brooks in 1922 and then was sent to the Philippines to command two U.S. Corps areas and then he also served in the 1928 Olympic Games Committee. Unfortunately he divorced Louise in 1929 and made it to full general in 1930 when he has made the Army Chief of Staff. During the Great Depression he fought valiantly uh, to keep the military afloat during FDR's budget cuts for the military and unfortunately had to send troops to dispel the bonus ve veterans who were marching in Washington DC in 1932. He retired uh, from the military in 1937 to marry a young lady by the name of Jean Faircloth. And they went back to the Philippines and their son Arthur MacArthur IV was born in February 1938 in Manila. He served in the Philippines for the Filipinos as a field marshal of the army as well as a military advisor to the president and he served there until 1941 when he was actually recalled into the American military in July 1941, just as things are heating up for us. In March 1942, after Pearl Harbor, he is actually stationed in Australia to take command of the Allied Southwest Pacific Theater. And he ousts the Japanese from Papua New Guinea and uh, works with the Navy to uh, develop something that is called the Triphibious Warfare, or in layman's term, the island hopping, which was where they struck the islands that the Japanese, that weren't Japanese strongholds, and skipped over the ones where the Japanese were strong on. In 1943 and 1944, using the island uh, hopping method, 
he won back New Guinea and Lee or Lao, San Sapor, the Solomons, West New Britain, and Rabal. And in the fall of 1944, he won back uh, more Thai, Let's, and Mandoro. He liberated his beloved Philippines in October 1944. In 1944, the Republican uh, Party asks him to run for the presidency against FDR, but he decides against that. Instead, he commands the costly Luzon campaign in 1945. In April 1945, he is made commander of the Pacific Forces, and on August 28, 1945, he is appointed the military governor of Japan, and he accepts their full surrender aboard the USS Missouri on September 2nd, 1945, thus effectively ending World War II. In the post-war era, he is the military governor of Japan, and he works to de demobilize their army and restore the economy and revise their constitution, as well as still heading up the Far East Command of the U.S. military. In the Korean War, he commanded the UN forces until April 11th, 1951, where he is removed from his command due to insubordination, and he returns to wild popularity from the American people until the Senate investigates the reasons for his removal and he is disgraced. And he again in 1948 was asked to run for the president. He declined and in 1952 again he is at, asked for a third time to run for president and again he declines and he takes the chairmanship of the Remington Rand Corporation and lives a secluded retirement as head of the corporation and he died in April 1964 at Walter Reed. Though he ended up as a disgraced military officer and was a con controversial leader, he won the Medal of Honor during World War II for his valiant defense of the Philippines, and he had a career of 52 years. We are moving on to perhaps the most colorful of the senators during World War II, and that is George S. Patton, who on his birth certificate is George Smith Patton. He was born in California on November 11th, 1885 into a very wealthy family. It is postulated that he had undiagnosed dyslexia, so he did not begin a formal education until age 11. However, he read constantly and particularly he was very fond of Civil War history. He spent a year in Virginia at the Virginia Military Institute before transferring to West Point and he had to redo his uh, freshman year because he had really bad grades. So Patton graduates in 1909 nonetheless and on May 26, 1910 he marries Beatrice Iyer, the daughter of a wealthy Bostonian industrialist and is sent to General Joseph J. Pershing's staff on the Mexican border in 1916 to combat Pancho Villa and hopefully capture the outlaw. Unfortunately, that did not happen, yet this is where he has his aha moment. In an attack where he kills three a of Villa's men, he used for the very first time motor vehicles in a U.S. Is warfare, which led to him creating the tank war later on. The following year, the U.S. enters World War I on April 6th, and he is sent to France 
as part of Pershing's staff, where he is promoted to a temporary major in November 1917, and his pipe dream becomes a reality when he forms a tank corps. Then he disobeys orders, and on September 12, 1918, now a lieutenant colonel, and leads those newly formed tank corps into battle at St. Mahalil. But he is severely wounded, and the uh, Masseuse are gone, uh, offensive, and unfortunately he lays in a crater for a full day before uh, get, getting taken off the field, but he refuses medical attention until he reports to his commander. He is promoted to a full colonel and receives a Purple Heart and the Distinguished Service Cross Medal for this, unfortunately horrible event. After the war, he actually unfortunately is demoted to a captain and he attends the Army War College in 1932 and during this period he tirelessly campaigns for the use of tanks in warfare and he is promoted to a colonel again in 1938. In 1941 he is temporarily promoted to a brigadier general and he makes it to temporary major general in 1941. During World War II, on April 11, 1941, he is created a commanding officer of the 2nd Armored Division, and he is posted in India, California as the head of a desert training center to prepare soldiers for the North African campaign, which takes place in November 1942, and he leads the Western Task Force into battle, landing at Casablanca in November 1942. He is promoted to temporary Lieutenant General in March 1943 and leads the Seventh Army into Sicily. He captures Palmero in Messina. And then he takes the command of the fictitious First Army Group, which is stationed in uh, Eastern England to make German reconnaissance believe that the Allies are going to attack the Cali region of France instead of Normandy. Patton makes it to France on August 1st, 1944, and he races through France and by the end of the month, his men have captured, and I'm gonna butcher these French names, uh, May, Main, Level, Le Mans, Reims, and Chalons. During the Battle of the Bulge, he reinforces the original military group at Baston. 10 days after the Germans attack. In his own form of Blitzkrieg, Patton reaches the German frontier in January 1945 and against his superior's wishes takes true and reports back with the now famous words, having taken cheer with two divisions, would you like me to give it back? By VE Day, which is Ma May 8th, 1945, Patton and his army, the Third Army, uh, actually has captured 80,000 square miles of enemy territory and with the war over now in Europe he requests to be transferred to the Pacific Theater which unfortunately is denied and he is given the governorship of the German state of Bavaria which is not a good fit for him. He is uh, relieved of that command in October 1945 and his final command in Germany is to march the 15th U.S. Army in, into Bad nah, Neuheim, Germany and he has to write a chronicle of the war in Europe which he does not like at all but he is still in Germany when he is involved in a low-speed car accident on December 9th, 1945, and he suffers head and uh, spine injuries, which leads to his death 12 days later 
on the 21st of December 1945. He recently had just turned 60. So there y'all have it. The who, what, and where of the greatest uh, military commanders of the, the war. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to uh, see more videos uh, on important figures of the era, just drop me a line with that important figure that you would like me to research down in the description box. And while you are down there, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you are on social media, don't forget to hop on there and follow me. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram, I am underscore eventually or 3945. And on Facebook, my username over there is the name of my channel, eventually yours. I am so looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you over there. And I will see you in my next video, which will be a fun one. Bye.